to call the township committee meeting to order. Ronnie, will you lead us in a pledge to the flag, please? And Chun, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice on the bulletin board in the municipal building and emailing a copy of the notice along with the agenda of this meeting to the Press of Atlantic City, Atlantic County Record, Record Journal, and current newspapers stating this meeting would take place at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, March 21, 2016 in the municipal building, Mays Landing, New Jersey. Ms. Gatto? Here. Mr. Gouchard? Present. Mr. Kurtz? Here. Mr. Shanker? Here. Mayor Selva? Here. Can we take a moment of silence for private reflection and please keep in your thoughts and prayers the passing of uh, uh, Matthew Robertson, uh, Robeson. He was a uh, life member of the First Aid Squad in the uh, Weymouth Fire Department. He passed away on the 15th. First item on the agenda is a confirmation of the executive session. It's A, the appointment of Rita Martino as township clerk for three-year term effective April 1, 2016 through March 31st, 2019 at a salary of 85,000 per year with a 5,000 increase after one year of service contingent upon successful performance evaluation. <coughs> um, um, I make a motion of that appointment um, as outlined in the payroll status change form in our packet. Second. I second it. A motion is second. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Gatto? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. And Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and carried. Thank you. B, the appointment of Lori Fideli as Deputy Township Clerk, effective April 1, 2016, at a salary of 53000 per year with a 2000 increase after one year of service, contingent upon successful performance evaluation. So moved. Second. The motion is second. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Gatto? Yes. Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. And Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and carried. Thank you. C, the appointment of Lori Fidel as public agency compliance officer effective April 1, 2016 at a salary of 5,000 per year. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Questions or comments to the motion? Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Gatto? Yes. Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. And Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and Thank carried. Thank you. Next item is the administration of oath of office to Rita Martino as township clerk for a three-year term effective April 1, 2016 through March the 31st, 2019, administered by Assemblyman Chris Brown. Rita, Chris. While Rita and her sons come up, I just want to say what an honor it is for me to participate in the swearing in. And I'm not just happy for Rita, but I'm happy for all the families of Hamilton Township, uh, not a finer, <coughs> harder working, dedicated public uh, servant uh, can you find than Rita, so this is really exciting for me. All right, here we go. I guess uh, put your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand. Turn around her office, right around here, right there. Oh. <laughs> All right. I, Rita Martinez, <coughs> Rita Martinez, you solemnly swear, you solemnly swear that, I will support <coughs> the Constitution that I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States and, the Constitution and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, of the State of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and allegiance I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, to the same, and to the governments established, and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. I do further solemnly swear, I do further solemnly swear that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly perform 
All the duties. All the duties. Of the office of township clerk. Of the office of township clerk. For the term of April 1, 2016. For the term of April 1, 2016. Through March 31, 2019. Through March 21. 31. 31. 2019. 2019. <laughs> <laughs> I should have practiced once. <laughs> According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Jones uh, Station, please. Chris, would you come up? Uh, I think you had something you were going to read. I knew from... you were fibbing. Huh? <laughs> I didn't fib. I tell the truth. I told you God has been good. Come on up, Chris. I'll... Yeah. Chris is about to read a letter from the governor uh, commemorating uh, Jones' uh, 46 years of service. And, and also at this time, we're going to recognize Jones' uh, service to the community. We thought we would do it early on because I didn't want her at the end of the meeting running out the door because I told her nothing was going to happen. <laughs> Chris. You know, the governor and I uh, don't agree on a lot of things, but the one thing we absolutely agree upon is Jones' service and 46 years uh, dedicated to this township. And now it's an honor for me to read to you a letter signed by the governor. Dear Miss Anderson, on behalf of the state of New Jersey, I am pleased to congratulate you on your retirement from the Township of Hamilton. For nearly half a century working for the Township, you have exhibited professionalism, integrity, and expertise. Your outstanding performance has earned the admiration and respect of your colleagues and has established a standard of excellence that will be difficult to parallel. As you reflect upon your career, you can take pride in the knowledge that your hard work and commitment will serve as an inspiration to others, and I join with your family, friends, and colleagues in applauding you on a job well done. Congratulations. Thank and you. And again, best wishes for good health and happiness in the years ahead. Congratulations. Thank you. addition to this, the governor didn't tell us to present this to you. This was committee's idea. We're presenting this proclamation to you, Joan. Whereas Joan Anderson has been a resident of the Township of Hamilton since 1958. She's been employed by the Township since 1969 and has served as Township Clerk since she was first elected in 1978. And whereas the Township of Hamilton is proud to honor Joan Anderson on the occasion of her retirement from public service and to commend her for her 46 years of dedication and commitment to the community. Now, therefore, we, the Township Committee of the Township of Hamilton, do hereby proclaim April 1, 2016 as Joan Anderson Day. In honor of her devotion to the residents of the township, we take this opportunity to express our sincere and grateful appreciation for her service. She is beloved by our colleagues and will be sorely missed. We hereby extend to Joan our congratulations on her well-earned retirement and our best wishes to her for continued success, happiness, and good health in the years to come. And it's signed by all the committee and we have our picture on it taken along with Joan. John, it's not over. <laughs> so much for no fuss. No fuss. We're not fussing. You are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, go ahead, Amy. Um, yeah, Mr. Mayor, I think there was something else that we wanted to do, but um, I think everybody has to agree to it first. Yeah, I agree, and I think before we do, because we're not sure they want to all agree to it. Yeah, okay? maybe we should show before we, we vote on it. Okay, should do we that. show it? Yeah, let me. Hold okay, it. let me see, committee. What do you guys think if we make a motion to make 13th Street Honorary Joan Anderson Way? Oh my God. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Joan, everybody voted. You don't have to take minutes in that one, okay? <laughs> Here's present to you, Joan. And this will be up on the uh, the street sign for April 1st in honor of you. Thank you. Okay. I told you we weren't going to do much. <laughs> Good thing I got my husband here to carry my stuff. <laughs> God love you, John. <laughs> Thank you. And he thank does. You. Thank you. Every day. Thank Carl you. loves you? No, he said God loves you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carl better learn to love you now, too. <laughs> Congrats. Congrats. Ma, you deserve it. Did, did you want to say anything? Just all I can say is thank you. It's been an honor. But I'm looking forward to just taking it easy. And I guarantee you, township's in good hands. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda, there's no addition or deletion of late items. Um, early public comment on agenda items not listed for public hearing. Uh, one person signed up, Paul Resch. <clears throat> Paul? Come on up. Identify yourself. Should I guess what it's about now? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I guess the agenda item is the fact that uh, I have sent a letter to the council and township manager about um, what I consider a very hazardous intersection of Old Egg Harbor Road and uh, Harding Highway. Um, I, I suspect that I'm not the only person in the township that thinks it's dangerous. I've only been here four years, but uh, I've had enough close calls. And, and I am here representing the Horizon at Woods Landing Homeowners Association, of which I'm a member, as is, as is Carol, as is Bob, as is Arlene. I think we run this place. So it should be a no-brainer. Anyhow, I'm just, I simply am requesting that the township uh, endorse and I guess request that the State Department of Transportation take a study and see if um, it's somehow feasible to, to put a traffic signal, perhaps syncing it with the one on uh, at the bridge, but uh, just, just looking into it and trying to figure out how to make it safe. Speaking for us elderly people and for those parents and children who uh, use the under, under, under hill, <laughs> under wood? Under hill. Under hill. Under hill. So that's what I'm asking for. Well, Paul, you know, as you know, it's a discussion item on uh, B tonight. And uh, when we get to it, uh, it'll be right after the uh, shortly. And uh, we appreciate your comments. And I know your representation is here. And I'm sure they feel the same way, as do other people, too. So when that comes up at our discussion, uh, we'll, we'll have the appropriate comments and make the appropriate decision. OK? Can I Thank have two quick minute, more minutes, two sure. items? Related, actually. Sure. One of them is. You guys, with our, you guys did a great job of making no parking zones there. I come down there during events and even during practices, particularly in the fall when it's a little darker, and, and I think ignorant people take the, the, they park on the west side of the street so that if you're coming south on Old Hag Harbor, you're going 25 or less because there's kids around, but you cannot see if somebody is standing on the crosswalk. So I've called dispatch a couple of times, and dispatch, when I came back, uh, the cars were gone. But I think two things. 
if police see somebody there, they shouldn't just warn them and say, move on. They should ticket them. And the athletic association should fine anybody ignorant enough to park there. Waste. That's one. Okay. The other thing is I did make a request uh, in December to, to study the need for uh, street lamps along the old Hag Harbor Road between Keller Way and the ball field. And okay. I haven't heard back yet about that. And uh, Mike, did you, you sent that in? Checking for it. Yeah, okay. Because normally... Uh, well, it went to the police department. I know yeah, well, that. And then normally it, it takes a little bit of while before you hear something either positive or negative. Okay. Okay? Yes, sir. And thank you. I appreciate it. It is it's hazardous for kids and adults don't walk on our little I understand. parkway. They walk on the car. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Is that the only one, Michael? <coughs> yeah. That's it. Thank you. Um, okay. Discussion. Item four. Approve the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee informational event on April 9, 2016, at the Atlantic, Kitty, Atlantic County Library, Mays Landing. So moved. Well, Second. Carol, Carol is here. Carol, did too. you want to say anything since you're here? You Come on up. Come on up. Do you want, do you want to highlight uh, what you're having? Please. Uh, Yes, Mayor. We're having an event on April 9th at the library and representatives from the United Way, Jewish Community Services, Woodview Estates, Atlantic County Government, and Charles C. Bratton II, who is an attorney specializing in elder law, will be there. We are also having a woman by the name of Kathleen Rawa and her seeing eye dog, Dorito, will be there and she is also very knowledgeable in uh, other aspects of uh, handicap things that are available to people and we i'd like to thank deputy mayor gatto for uh directing her so that we could get Good. her to the the uh okay so this program. is this is april the 9th it's at okay, the farragut the avenue uh, li library from 11:30 a.m to 1:30 p.m correct yes, sir. Okay. Thank and we, you. We did make some copies uh, of the flyer, and I'm going to get it out to some of the businesses so they can post it in their windows. Sure. Too. And is it sure. on the board up front, the informational board? Uh, at the it point? will be once we approve it, I okay. believe. Okay. All right. So it'll be there. And, and thank I, you. I'm hoping that Ingrid could also do um, a Facebook invite from our community uh, mm -hmm. Facebook page as well. It, all, it also should be in web admin. Our uh, publication. Oh, of the events. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, um, Charlie Pritchard was going to put an article. Oh, good. Uh, in the uh, the newspaper for us all. See that, Charlie? You're very <laughs> popular back there. <laughs> he's he's one of our fans. Good. Okay. <laughs> Great work. Thank you, Thank Carol. You. What's your pleasure? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve uh, this. Uh, we already had there. a motion and a second. We just need a vote. Okay. Let's have it. Let's have a roll call. Miss Gatto. Uh, yes, and just want to commend that committee on the work that they're doing. A lot of great stuff. Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. And Mayor Silva? Yes. Well, yes, and Carrie. Okay, thank you. Uh, B, <coughs> NJDOT traffic study request for Route 40 and Old Lake Harbor Road intersection. Yeah, so basically it's just um, we would approve sending it to the state, sending that request to the state. Okay. We have to adopt this resolution, correct? Okay. And would we send any of the information in terms of the studies we've done on that road up with it? Okay. Okay. Because we have done various <clears throat> things on Old Egg Harbor Road previously. Okay. Good, Rodney. So, Mary, yeah. Um, this is also an item. I was recently selected to head the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee for the South Jersey Transportation Planning Office. And um, this is certainly one of the items I can bring up there. And uh, one of the things that, that we recently established was a, um, an online um, interface which allows citizens throughout the four county area <laughs> the input, uh, their concerns, their traffic concerns. It's very well done, it gives a map, you can point to the location, and then you can indicate what your specific, uh, what the problem is. 
Um, uh, looking forward to seeing people use it. And when something's entered, especially if it's entered multiple times, it's going to be looked at. So uh, that'll be one item that I make sure we address. Good. Thank you, Rodney. Oh, you did? Oh, great. Great. Yes, and we heard about it at our last meeting. So, yeah. Okay, so. Uh, and there's really no, there's no cost to us. It's just, no, there, that's, we're that's, just no. the facilitator, right? That's right. All right, make a motion to approve sending it to uh, the state. Second. Motion is second. Questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson. <coughs> Ms. Scatto? Yes. Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kirk? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and carried. Okay, Paul, it's going to go on its way. <coughs> and thanks Thank for bringing you. it to our attention. <coughs> um, Mike, if you want to also pass that on to our new contact in the governor's office. Uh, Ron Falong. Yeah. Okay, uh, C. A request from the Great Egg Harbor Regional High School to waive plan review fees. Mike, do you want to just talk about that briefly? Yes. Um, <coughs> We have a couple, Greater Egg, Harbor, <coughs> Greater Egg Harbor Regional High School has a couple projects going on in their upgrading the, the facility at Oakcrest High School. And they submitted documents for review. We reviewed their plans, at least two sets. I think there might be three total. Um, and we don't bill for building permits, but we do bill a plan review fee, which is only 25% of the building permit fee. That's according to our ordinance and state statute. Mike, the, the, it, the numbers that you have here, the project that they're going to have is, is a little over $19 million for the total cost of work and that the permit fees that would have been charged were in excess of $60,000. So already that was granted, correct? We're not charging this. We're not, we're not charging, charging the $60,000. Right. right. For the now, the, the plan that we are now, there's going to be an extensive amount of an, an inspection on that, right? Yes, absolutely. So they're, they're, the, the, they're asking to, to waive that. Uh, how do you feel, committee? Well, we we have never, as far as I'm aware, granted such an exception to any group or entity previously. I agree. Right. My understanding is we charged ACCC and what was the other the state project? Uh, the ACIT. The ACIT. Right. Yeah. Uh, but they've already had the permit fees waived. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm certainly a supporter of the schools, but but my feeling is, I mean, the, the taxpayers fund us also. And uh, this is an instance where there's definite work required, and uh, I think it's appropriate that there be a charge. Um, so I, I I, I'm against uh, giving a waiver. Yeah, I mean we're waiving over sixty thousand, and they're being asked to pay right. fifteen thousand. So we're more than splitting the difference. I mean <laughs> over and above. So. Well, and when I asked about the amount of inspection work that was going to be necessary, uh, considering you know the approvals that have gone before our planning board and the amount of work that they will be involved in over the next uh, uh, 12 to 18 months. I think it's significant, and obviously we should cover, at least cover our basic cost on that. So I'm the, I feel the same as most of you do. And, and it also to be clear that we do not have a surplus of talent in that area. In fact, we have a, uh, we're way behind. So, uh, yeah. You're exactly correct. So what's your pleasure? To deny the request. Well, the way that the agenda is written, it's asking for an affirmative vote. So if no one's going to make the motion or no one's going to second it, it dies from a want of approval. The what? If no one's going to make a motion to approve it or second that motion, it dies. Okay. Fine. So then there's no, no motion. Okay. Next item on the agenda, a resolution to promote teen suicide prevention awareness. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor. So this is a follow-up. Um, if you'll remember, uh, I think it was... Two meetings ago, we mentioned that love. we met with um, Carolyn Coburn from Sp mm -hmm. the Spread the Love or the organization um, with regard to uh, her organization and, and what their uh, their work is and what they try to do. And, and certainly we've had many other organizations step up and, and um, ask to, you know, help in some way with, with what we have happening um, in our community. So um, one of the first steps that we wanted to take was uh, just passing a resolution, um, basically saying that the township is obviously um, in favor of, of promoting the prevention of uh, teen suicide or, or any uh, kind of suicide, honestly. 
um, and, and making sure that we're a part of that effort to bring awareness to the community. So, um, and, and there's certainly many other things that we are in discussion to do um, with, with Carolyn and other organizations. And I think the, uh, the next agenda item on our, on our uh, discussions is kind of a, a nice follow-up to, um, to this exact discussion. So um, Lisa did a wonderful job back there. Um, actually finding and, and kind of putting together this resolution for us, um, which I think is really great. So um, I, the first thing is to, to make a motion to approve this, this resolution, which solidifies our support of uh, teen suicide prevention awareness. And uh, it's just one little step toward doing what we can to make a change. Mayor uh, Collin? Yeah. Uh, you said something, um, um, you said uh, a teen or any other suicide. And I'm just wondering, should this be uh, just suicide period? I mean, obviously, um, teen suicide is an area of great concern, but suicide in general is. I wonder if there's any. Oh, Rodney, but, yeah. but, but I think the focus on this one here is to, uh, um, to push the prevention programs among the students and their families and Absolutely. peer support. Uh, and, and we can address that too in, in suicide in general. I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. and it has happened in our community. And, yes. and I, I'm aware of it, and, and I agree with you, but uh, we've got a motion to uh, support this resolution. Um, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We don't need a no. Okay. And thank you. And we'll address that, too, if you want it in the subsequent meeting, all right? Thank you for your comments. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Next is the MLA request for waiver for the use of facilities uh, fee for peace, love, Cure Community Event Day. Um, yeah, and again, as I understand it, um, <clears throat> this event is uh, in partnership, I think, with the Spread the Love that's right. uh, Foundation. And um, it's uh, really meant to just be, a, as I understand it, a kind of family-loving day, just getting the community and families together um, and, and doing some fun events and just being together and being supportive of each other and, and doing things as um, as an active community and it's nice to see that MLAA is, is planning that. Um, again, I think it's just one of many things that are kind of being kicked around out in our in our community from people who, who want to make a difference and want to um, just try to change that tide in any way they can. So. And this event will be held on May the 7th, 2016 from 11 to 4. That's at uh, Leipzig, right? Hmm? The Leapy Field. Leapy Field. Yes. Okay. Fine. Barb, do you want to come up and talk about it? Come on up. Come on up, Barb. And Carol, any Carol, any help the seniors could do too. It's always something that that's good, you know. Um, the whole thing that we're trying to do is, as you said, is really just get everybody together with everything that's happened to you know some of our children and the family in, in our in our town so we want to do like hockey games uh we want to do kickball we want to do relay races lacrosse soccer use that entire space that we have just for families to come in and enjoy themselves so no cost good um, Great. parking is going to be our biggest issue we're hoping the cologne fire department will help us with that if not possibly the racetrack we're not sure yet we're you know open to suggestions but we're in the beginning stages of this so but we're excited well, you'll reach out to cologne right or even uh, any of the other fire departments yes yeah and i have a connection with a lot of them so and this is another event that should be on our web admin on the sign and on any other uh, mm -hmm. of our publications yes um, yeah, so now when do we typically waive application fees or have we ever? We have not ever waived the fee. The fee is $25 for the application. Um, MLAA already has $500 deposit on file with us. Plus they are the primary user of the facilities. I thought though that this event in conjunction with the Spread the Love would be a large or separate event. And I was hoping that we would get a separate application from them that we could waive that $25. And this is being done in conjunction with the, with the school, right? Uh, spread, the well, right. Well, spread the love. Spread the love. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's sort of the same um, premise, but uh, it's actually going to be called Spread the Love Community Field Day now. Yeah, you're going to reach down, though. I mean, unlike the one that they did at Great Egg Harbor a week or so ago, 
it's you're going to reach down into the, to, to, to all the grades, correct? Yes, it's for everybody. Which it's I think is great. Yes, little kids, big kids, all families, just the old fashioned, um, you know, bring a football, play with your kids. There'll be some literature there probably. Um, Carol wanted to do a couple of tables, you know, just for awareness, uh, but not really, you know, a lot of that. This is for us just to get together as a community. So. Okay. Like so, so if we're saying because they have five hundred dollars on 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 hand, we're going to leverage that if there's a problem, which is what the application fee would normally do. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, waive the application fee. Second. Motion is second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. The next item on the agenda is F. An ordinance creating a parking spot for wounded warriors. Ordinance will be number 1818 2016 of introduced. Uh, Art, do you want to take this? Because I know you were the gentleman that brought it to, uh, to the attention. Thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Um, yes, I think any opportunity we have at uh, paying tribute to our veterans in any way, shape, or form is a, uh, is a good idea. Um, whereas the Township Committee for Hamilton Township has determined that the handicap parking ordinance is in need of updating. And whereas the Township Committee for the Township of Hamilton has determined to honor and empower wounded warriors by providing and designating a parking space specifically used only by wounded warriors. And the ordinance goes on from there. Well, I won't bore you with the details. I just wanted to uh, show you what, what actually goes up there. This is uh, it's a great idea. I saw this some time ago. I thought it was a good idea to try and get it started, and, and I hope, uh, my hope is that it carries on to other places. Um, maybe the county and other organizations and even the mall and places like that will get involved with something like this. I think it's a, a good idea, and I hope the committee feels the same. Bobby? I uh, did the research on this. I wrote the ordinance. I've waived a fee for any of my work with respect to that. Wow. And I'm willing to donate the cost of the paint and the work to be done on the sign from my law firm. Oh, it's a good great. thing to do. It's wonderful. I'm a donator of Wounded Warriors. I have been. I send my 19 bucks every month, and I'd encourage everybody out there to do the same. Well, thank you. I, I did have a couple of comments on, on if, if Art is, are you finished, Art? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Uh, this, this was, Art did bring this up before the Veterans Advisory Board, and then we all discussed it, and we thought it was a good idea. Uh, th there were just two minor items here, though, and I, I ask what you all think of it. Under Wounded Warriors, it says, <laughs> shall mean those men, and men or women who served as veterans of any of the military branches of the United States of America and said service members who incurred a physical and or mental injury, illness, or wound or coincident to the military service. The way, it, the way it reads, I'm wondering whether it, it also allows, it says, shall mean those men and or women who served as veterans. So the way it reads, it possibly can be interpreted as veterans as well as wounded veterans. Was that, was that the intent? I could reword that, Rodney, but I think that I, I know. I took that definition from the Wounded Warriors Pilot Program. Well, maybe that's what it, uh, what it intended. <laughs> uh, but and, and the way it's, the way I wrote it was to encompass any individual who has suffered a mental or physical injury in the service of our military at any level for any branch at any time. I got it. But does it also include just plain veterans? Because it, because it could possibly be interpreted. That well, way. well, you take a look at it. If you, I, I, if you don't I think will. so, that's all right. I, I uh, just one other thing on paragraph one eight six point five on the prohibited parking says vehicular parking shall be prohibited to the extent and that should be to the extent I think that such spaces so the, the D should be a T minor point Bob 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 we already caught the and changed it that's why she's the best <laughs> you know I told you Okay. okay. What's your pleasure? Uh, make a motion. Right. I'll make motion. a motion. I'll second it. Motion is second. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson, let's have a uh, voice uh, vote. Ms. Gatto? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? 
Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and carried. Thank you. And thank you, Arch, for bringing it to uh, you, our yeah. attention. Thank I you, appreciate Arch. it. Yeah, it's and great. Bob, thank you for uh, the work that yeah, you've done absolutely. and will do. Okay? We appreciate your benevolence. I am a huge fan. I know that. Of the military. I know that. Okay. Next item is G, the NJDOT request for a resolution of support for no passing zones on Route 50. Yeah, uh, well, I 1,000% support this uh, since I live on Route 50 and have to endure yes. the endless accidents. Uh, most recently, another motorcycle accident um, about two weeks ago. Um, the only question I have is where exactly does it apply to? Because I don't see um, the... It says the center line markings will not change. Yeah, because they already went to a double they did, line. Right. What? I thought that we were just endorsing what was already done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that it is? That's what I thought. So it's the entire length of Route 50 in Hamilton Township? Yes. I was told that was already made no passing. Yes. Yeah, it's already double line. Mm-hmm. So we're saying we endorse following the law? Which those, is of okay. that, those of us that <laughs> do. Had a question. Yeah, those of us that do. <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the uh, request for the second. resolution from the state. Second. The motion is second. Questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Scatto? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Kushar? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. Well, yes, and Karen. Thank you. I just want to ask um, Michael Mahalik, the supervisor of traffic investigations, who sent us this <laughs> resolution to endorse the work that's already been done, if he maybe could have spent that time on any of our other state highway things. Like McKee like, Avenue, New York Avenue, like the light timing of the lights. Timing of the lights <laughs> and the parking signs. Well, I'm just curious. The one employee they have is busy. The one guy is writing a resolution. That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, item number five is the public hearing on ordinances. Ordinance number 1816, 2016. Ordinance amending Exhibit A, Section 1, Article 2 of Chapter 66 of the Township Code, providing for the maximum number of employees. Michael. Yes, sir, Mayor. This ordinance um, actually does about five different things. It creates the position of exemption and abatement officer. Um, that's to administer our new uh, exemption and abate, tax exemption and abatement ordinance. It creates a new full-time position for zoning official um, as outlined in our budget presentation. Um, it switches the part-time zoning official now to a deputy zoning official code enforcement officer. Um, it just switches that person to a different part-time position. Mm -hmm. And fire code enforcement officer, it, it switches them. It creates that position, right? It creates that position, right. Mm -hmm. And then the electric subcode official is a position we proved a, a few meetings ago. I'm trying to include it in the ordinance. Unfortunately, this ordinance says $25 an hour. It should be 35 So rather than hold up all this, I can start another ordinance just to correct that. All right. So it would be considered a substantial. Oh, because it's public hearing. That's right. That's okay. right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mike. Anything yes. else? Mm -hmm. All right. This is a public hearing. Anyone in the public wish to uh, make any comment? Please keep in mind the ordinance exists that before we could extend the number of employees that we currently have by ordinance, uh, we have to create an ordinance that allows us to extend and make sure that we have money in our budget to pay for it. Uh, that was the whole intent here, was not to go overboard uh, and, um, and find ourselves not being able to fund some of these positions. So yeah. there's a public hearing. Anyone in the public wish to speak? I didn't even see you there, Bruce. You must have snuck in. Hmm? I think it is noteworthy, like you said, that uh, uh, first of all, having the ordinance uh, that 
uh, then you need to have a public hearing to increase employees is a good one. I think uh, in years past, I think before uh, several, you, several of you were on committee, uh, that may have contributed at any rate to uh, the problems we had a few years ago with our budget. So um, you should be commended for introducing and passing that ordinance. Um, you also were part of strategic planning that, that pushed this too. Well, there, which I think was significant. Well, there was a, a lot of, uh, a lot, but, a lot but of people that were that. involved in the strategic planning initiative, and that is one good thing that came out of it. Um, another um, part of strategic planning initiative was uh, the input from the community uh, that you're aware of, and one of the uh, things that, that came up many times at many of the five different meetings around the uh, uh, township was the lack of code enforcement and zoning enforcement. So uh, it's been a while, uh, but uh, because of the, uh, the cuts in employees, uh, but now I think it's uh, come to a point where you need to carefully um, look at the number of employees and increase where needed. So I think that's what you're doing tonight um, with the addition of a, a full-time zoning officer. Uh, I think uh, zoning enforcement has been as uh, sort of putting on, uh, been put on the back burner because of uh, lack of manpower and uh, uh, budget uh, consideration. So um, I think there are some zoning issues that need to be addressed. I, uh, again, part of the strategic planning initiative, we had meetings with uh, the zoning officials and the and planning department. And um, at that time, uh, zoning enforcement was uh, <coughs> reactive rather than proactive. Uh, I think that it's time that uh, the township uh, uh, gets a little more proactive because uh, basically zoning uh, and developmental ordinances protect residential properties, uh, business properties, and basically anyone who has a, uh, owns a property in Ham Hamilton Township has a vested interest and uh, would like to see those, uh, th those assets um, maintained if not increased. So, um, it's, I think it's important that we, uh, and you go forward with some uh, proactive zoning enforcement. So, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else in the public wish to speak? Motion to close public comment. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to adopt. I, I do have a, a comment on it though. The, the reason this was passed so that we could assure that we had the money to uh, pay for the position, but I haven't heard anyone say that we assured that before before this uh, ordinance. I know we have the money, but I, I don't see anything here that says we've assured that we have the money. Well, you it was in the budget. The budget it's presentation. in the budget. Yeah. All right, it wasn't as, the, as uh, part of the budget presentation. The, the ordinance actually says it. It does say it? Whereas okay. these changes were planned for and included in the township's 2016 operating budget. So okay. It's in what you're not. But thank you for keeping us on our toes. <laughs> Uh, I made a motion to adopt. Motion and a second. Uh, Mrs. Anderson? Oh, we need, yes. What's your pleasure? I made the motion. Okay. I second it. Ms. Second. Um, have a roll call, please. Ms. Scato? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Gushar? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and carried. Thank you. Okay. Item six, ordinance number 1817, 2016 bond ordinance appropriating $2 million and authorizing the issuance of $1,900,000 in bonds or notes of the Township of Hamilton for capital improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the Township of Hamilton. Michael, just want to run that by again so they know what we, uh, we did in terms of what we retired and how we got to this position. Yes, sir. The, um, this ordinance is consistent with our capital improvement program that we did in our presentation. It allow us to um, bond for um, the projects that we listed. Um, I don't know if you street some street paving, um, some money towards uh, Lake Lenape Dam. There's some public safety communications equipment, some IT equipment, and some emergency equipment. It's uh, two two fire trucks are included in this. Um, some cash, some bonding. So it's our, it's our capital budget program yes. for people mm -hmm. who want to look at it in detail, which is on the web right now. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. And it was part of the budget presentation, yeah. Correct. So we actually retired a million three, and we're bonding for two, so the net difference was 700000 correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
It's your pleasure. Make a motion to introduce. Second. Motion is second. Questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Scatto? Yes. Mr. Gouchard? <coughs> yes. Mr. Kurtz? <coughs> yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and care. Thank you. Item seven, land sales. Accept $1,500 bid offered by Andrew and <coughs> Diane Boyd and authorize the sale of lot six and block nine to them. So moved. Second. The motion is second. Questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Scatto? Yes. Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and carry. Thank you. B, authorize the public land sale of lot five and block 591 on April 14th, 2016, 2.49 acres at 6827 of Black Horse Pike, CHC zoning, minimum bid $3,500. No bids were received under the prior ordinance, which was what, 1810-2016? So we're what, reauthorizing now, Mike? I think this is taking it to a public land sale as opposed to audit. Yeah, but the ordinance was a contiguous owner request uh, authorization, but none of the contiguous owners bid. So okay. now it goes to public sale. Straight open, public sale. okay. okay. Uh, make a motion to authorize the public land sale. Second. second. Motion is second. Questions or comments? Let's have a roll call, Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Gatto? Yes. Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and carried. Thank you. Uh, C, authorize the public land sale of lot 9 and block 18 on April of 14, 2016. Seven and a half acres at 1557 Orchard Road. Minimum bid $6,000. Make a motion to authorize that land second. sale. Second. Motion is second. Any questions or comments on a motion? Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Gatto? Yes. Mr. Grishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and carried. Okay, thank you. Make a motion for consent agenda 8A through H. Second. <laughs> A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You right with that, Bob? Thank you. Approvals, minutes, regular meeting, March 7th, 2016. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion is second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Executive session, March 7th, 2016. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson. Ms. Gatto? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shane? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All well, yes and Thank carried. you. Payroll and bills totaling $2,947,040.84. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Questions or comments on a motion? Roll call, please. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Ms. Gatto? Yes. Mr. Gouchard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silva? Yes. All yes and Thank carried. You. Reports. Mr. Administrator. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to say it's been a real pleasure working with Mrs. Anderson um, and congratulate her on her retirement. And I've learned a lot and valued um, the five years I've been working with you. It's Thank you. It's been great. And also I'd like to uh, welcome aboard Rita as the new clerk. I think she'll do a great job for us. I look forward to working with her. Great. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Solicitor. Bob, there'll be a recording made of her asking you to speak into the microphone. <laughs> We're gonna I, I know that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. We're just going to push it all the time. <laughs> yes. Um, first of all, uh, Rita's awesome. I've had the pleasure of working with her for many years. She is a formidable successor to Joan Anderson, but to my way of thinking, there's only one Joan Anderson. I started in this town in 1992 as a solicitor. I had very little experience. I even had some hair then. <laughs> but. Mrs. Anderson was always a person that I could go to and realized that as good a lawyer as I was, she was better than me. <laughs> and she was always gracious and always willing to share and always to make sure I didn't always put my foot in my mouth. <clears throat> but Joan, you are a true 
exemplar of what a public servant should be. Um, I have become your friend. I'm going to very much miss you. And this township owes a lot, of, a lot of gratitude to you for many, many years of what you did. And it's not just that you did everything well, but it was how you did it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it, Bob. Mr. Engineer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if I can follow that up. I've only known Joan for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just learned something. But I so learned a lot in that hour, <laughs> and, and I would only wish that I would have been here earlier to, to work with a little bit more. So do congratulate you. Um, unfortunately, bigger and better things. Have fun on the railroad. Uh, my report is pretty brief. Uh, we had a couple inspections for some concrete and sidewalk in Cedar Point. Uh, let me just interrupt you. Do sure. you want to introduce yourself to the public so that oh, they sure. know you, why you're not Steve? Uh, my <laughs> name is Joe Maffei. I'm an engineer with Engineering Design Associates. My partner, Steve Philippone, is actually out on medical leave, so I'll be filling in for him in uh, the interim. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, we had a couple sidewalk inspections, driveway aprons at Lenar Homes and also Monet Drive. We did have a few South Jersey gas road opening permits. We had three of them. And of course, Thursday night, the Buffalo Pike Associates received their amended preliminary and final approval. And they are anticipated to start construction very soon. Very good. Within the next probably month. Great. Other Thank than you. that, that is it. That's awesome. And uh, give our very best and speedy recovery to uh, Steve. I certainly will. I know he's been through a lot, uh, but I'm sure now <laughs> He's on his way to recovery, and that, he's, he's uh, doing fine. Not, thank not you. Not that much. we don't appreciate you being there, but tell him <laughs> we miss him. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Township committee. John. Well, I'd like to reiterate the comments, uh, Joan. It's been a pleasure working with you on committee this time that I've been here, and it's uh, it's great the, all the great work that you do. Uh, I also have had the pleasure of working with Joan for many years on the uh, events that we've put on in the township for the Merchants Association. Uh, she's handled the request and the paperwork for those. <coughs> so I want to thank again for all of that. She's been a great help. Thank you. Thanks, John. Roddy? Yeah, just let me say, I haven't worked with Joan anywhere near as long as some of the people here, but I'll tell you what, in the time I've worked with her, I've really been impressed. Um, she is, uh, I remember the first time we went to ask her something, my goodness, she's, a, she's just a, an encyclopedia full of knowledge. She's got the history, she's got the reasons, and it's almost true about what Bob said about her being a better lawyer. <laughs> of course, I don't just... <laughs> But she is... Uh... <laughs> But, but she is just a library of knowledge, and uh, we really appreciate uh, her service. There is one bad part, though. Every time I look at, at our mail, my goodness, there must be, uh, there must be 20, 25 emails from, from Joan. <laughs> These are things that I guess we should know about, but my goodness. So uh, I don't know how Rita's going to do, but. <laughs> I leave it up to you. She they keeps us informed. To me to yes. Pass on. Yes, indeed. And, and it's appreciated. Um, I just wanted to say we mentioned the uh, <clears throat> the suicide efforts, and there was a uh, the uh, Greater E. Cobble Regional Township uh, Superintendent uh, organized a, a meeting uh, uh, over at Oakrest, uh, and uh, the auditorium was just about full. Uh, it was a very moving event. There were six or seven uh, presenters on the stage, and everyone. And by the way, there were teachers, parents, students, professionals. Every one of them had committed suicide at one point or another. And when you hear them talk and you hear what they went through, it's really heart, heart wrenching. Um, and, and you know, they say um, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. How true that is, because here are these people sat there and told us about their experiences and now they're just fully functioning people. Uh, it was very impressive. After the, uh, the meeting, there were several sessions held where they gave advice to, uh, to parents. And I sit on one of them, and I have to just pass on. <clears throat> you think that there may be some way to, to uh, some, some mode of behavior that, that the people exhibit, but almost every suicide is different. And uh, uh, you can have a child that's extremely happy and outgoing and enjoys people, and then the next thing you know, there's something like that occurs. On the other hand, you can have a person that's very quiet and introverted, and it can happen to them too. They say the one thing to look for is a significant change in personality. Apparently, that's one thing.
But the other thing that was really stressed was the need to communicate with your kids. And uh, you've all had the experience, I think, the kid comes home from school and you say, how did it go? It went fine. And that's it. <laughs> well, we shouldn't allow it to, to, to just stop at that. We should try to communicate. It's a very good session. Uh, there, there are many, there's much help uh, available in the county. Uh, and, and, and there was one thing that uh, uh, I think we might all be uh, benefit from. Uh, one of the people mentioned that they had a, a situation where the child was about, to, where they were very concerned about the child and they called and the response they got, they called several places, well, you can come by in, in six weeks, we'll have an appointment for you. <laughs> well, that's just not good enough. There is a number, though, that you can call and get immediate response, and that's 211. And that's something worth remembering. Um, so I pass it on. Um, I mentioned the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, hopefully, we'll be hearing more about that. Hopefully, we'll be able to, to, to get more things done in the transportation arena. Uh, we're really trying to find an effective way to get uh, citizens involved in, uh, in transportation and to get problems identified. So um, you, you'll, you'll hear a bit more about that, and we will get some websites and, and things on the, on the web for you here. Um, I attended the, uh, the, associ the county, Atlanta County Association of Township Officials, and um, they uh, all talked about their budget experiences. And um, all I can say is that, generally speaking, the increases were modest. I think there may have been one case where there wasn't an increase, but there were just modest increases. People all felt the majority were happy that the county dropped the efforts to, for the central dispatch. Um, and they were all having Easter aid hunks, just like we did. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thanks, Rodney. All right. Uh, yeah, I just, um, I haven't known Mrs. Anderson in a professional <coughs> level, <coughs> excuse me, very long. Um, I can tell uh, by just the short time that I've been up here and including tonight, the love and admiration that everyone in this room has for you is, is incredible. It's, uh, it's, it's really nice to see someone who is, is admired that much for the job that they do and how hard they work. And you will be sorely missed here, um, but I wish you well. I wish you a great retirement and a long retirement. Thank you. And I look forward to uh, working with Rita, who uh, from what I hear is very, very good at her job. So we will see in the future and I'm sure she'll do us proud and she has big shoes to fill, but I'm sure she's gonna do her best. So she surely congratulations will. to her. And congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ward. Amy. All right. A um, couple of things. Uh, just, just number one, um, we I think we were remiss in, in the um, uh, moment of silence, uh, and also remembering Skip Ellis, who uh, formerly owned Maze Landing Auto Parts in town, um, was unfor he unfortunately passed away, I believe, right after our last meeting. So certainly send our thoughts and prayers to Skip. Um, but just to kind of mentioned uh, Matt Robeson who passed as well. Um, Matt is the twin brother to Mike Robeson who is our uh, one of our police detectives and our uh, emergency management coordinator and I just the family that family their service to our community is just really unparalleled and um, Matt was a fireman uh, he served on EMS I think was one of kind of the original Weymouth uh, EMS um, uh, staff members and his son is currently uh, serving our community on, on EMS as well. And I believe just put himself through dispatch school and is hoping to potentially become one of our dispatchers one day. <coughs> so the, there's just a ton of commitment to public service and um, it was unexpected, it was tragic. He was a dear friend um, and I think it's a huge loss. Um, so um, I just really wanna send regards out to the family. Um, and, and again, again thank, thank him for his service to our community. Um, on a happier note, um, on Friday night at Oakcrest High School, uh, Mitchell Carter was crowned Mr. Oakcrest, and I had the pleasure of serving as a celebrity judge at Mr. Oakcrest, which was quite an experience. I took home um, flowers and candies uh, from the contestants who were trying to butter the judges up. Did it work? Uh, well, I don't know if it worked, but I think I gained five pounds. Um, <laughs> But uh, really, it was a wonderful event, and I think the thing that should be really highlighted was how highly each of the gentlemen spoke about their competitors. 
and you know typically you get really competitive and you want to win and and of course they all wanted to win but um i think one of them um when when asked what was their favorite part of the uh, mr ocross experience it was getting to know the other guys and it was guys they had gone to high school with for four years and and maybe not have known and that they had all learned from each other and grown from each other and were supportive of each other's efforts and um it was just really really nice on, from a positive side of, you know, we see these pressures that the kids are, are dealing with and to see them be supportive of each other through a competitive process, um, mm -hmm. it was just really something to witness and really great. And Mitchell did, an out, they all did an outstanding job, but Mitchell really stood out. And um, Mitchell just so happened to be, and you wouldn't have known it, I think, for many of us who have recently met Mitchell, but Mitchell is in uh, working on a video for us in a, in a, a collaboration with the township and the high school uh, in their media department. And um, he's a very kind, <coughs> semi, I think, reserved young man from what I had, uh, from what I have witnessed here. But you would not have known that on stage from him. Uh, and it was amazing. Um, and, and he is just a, a really talented individual. And uh, I'm really excited for what he is going to produce. Um, hopefully we'll see it next week. Um, it would be a nice little tribute to Mrs. Anderson that he's working on. So uh, it it's should be a very nice young man. He is, and it should be something wonderful. And I'm glad we're we're able to partner with the media department on that. I hope it's the first of many partnerships with them. Um, and Mrs. Anderson, um, I, I mean, of course, I extend my congratulations to Rita. I have no doubt in her ability. Um, I know she's been learning from the best for a long time, and. Uh, Joan, I don't know if I've known you the longest up here because I've known you since I was a kid. And uh, that's true. I have watched and learned you, learned from you all the way. And uh, one thing I learned from you was how to be a very fierce woman in the room. And Joan might look like she is a meek and mild <laughs> woman who's very quiet. But when you know Joan's going to open her mouth, you better brace yourself because she definitely has something to say, and it's definitely something that you better hear. <laughs> and I think we've all felt that wrath from Joan from time to time, and, uh, and it's because she knows what she's talking about, and she wants to make sure people are gonna be successful in whatever endeavor it is. And Joe and I just, I wish you so much love and happiness in your retirement, and I, I hope your husband can keep up with you. And I hope you can keep up with your husband because I think That's it's going to be a competition in that household um, because we, we love you both so much for the, the service to our community in all of your many facets. And I just I wish you nothing but the best coming from as a neighborhood kid and student and, and now uh, a colleague of yours. So congrats. I thank you. But my motto is I'll back up as far as I can. But when I have to stop backing up, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so true. <clears throat> Thank I you, guess Mr. one of the things I'll remember most about Mrs. Anderson, I don't know if very many people still take shorthand. And Carl, that's why you haven't gotten a lot of things done around the house, because the list she leaves for you is all written in shorthand, and you don't understand it, right? <laughs> huh? He's got his own list, that's why. Joan, I, it goes without question. I've been fortunate enough to know you for a few years, uh, not only the nine that I've served on committee now, uh, but even before that. And uh, I'm going to miss walking into your office to see the piles of paper there. <laughs> They're disappearing, sorry. They did disappear, and you got that ready for Rita. She'll be able to see the desk, right? <laughs> but, but, but I think the, the, uh, the respect people have for you says volumes. And, you know... Aside from the fact that the governor sent you a letter, uh, I, think, yeah. I think that's significant. I think the members and all the residents of the community know Joan Anderson, and they'll always remember you and your contributions, and for that we'll be eternally grateful. Uh, grateful. So we want you to know we appreciate you beyond words. Thank you. I think you're without equal. Thank you. Okay. Um, I sat in the audience the same night that Rodney was there, and we were at Oakcrest, and what always amazed me about people who speak uh, on the dais, and there were enough of them, and they were all, uh, and I would say in that age group from about uh, the mid-20s to the mid-30s, when you say that, Rod? If you listen to their stories, I mean, they have to impact your thought process. 
It was almost similar when I sat in on a recovery center one a couple of years ago, and someone said to me, do you think you could help us? And I said, no matter what I could do won't help you as much as you getting out your message. And I think the messages that they <clears throat> deliver were so inspiring that uh, you have to understand, we don't know what motivates people to, to get to that particular point in their life, but I'm sure many of us have known people or have been around people who have gone that far, but I haven't known too many that have been able to come out of it and talk about it like these young people did. So I was impressed that night. Um, the positive side of that night was I think it was the next morning I had to go read to the first graders over at Chainer. And of course, um, I read my favorite book, which was Mr. Duck for President. And the, the funny thing about it is after I finished reading, the kids ask you such great questions. I think the first question they asked me, when were you born? And, you know, I tried to explain to them I'm not that old, but, you know. And then they asked me if I had a wife and then, what was the most significant thing you have ever done in your life? And I said, outside of coming to read to you here. But, but the nice thing about young, young children at that age, they're like sponges. They absorb everything. They listen attentively. And if you could have read them the book twice, they would have loved it if you stayed there. So for me, each year, I look forward to that, that reading day with those young people, and it's significant. John, you didn't talk about it, and I know the engineer did, but um, I was at the planning board the other night when they approved the uh, subdivision for uh, the final uh, approval for uh, uh, Benderson's project. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope every one of you know how significant <coughs> that's going to be for this township. Very much I mean, so. That's yeah. been a long time in the making, and that's going to eventually connect the, uh, the jug handle across from by Chunky Cheese all the way to the back of Volunteer Way. And Bill, you're sitting in the back, and how many times have we talked about the traffic situation? This actually is going to be getting, once they cut that through, and he's going to build, what, 300,000 square foot retail center Absolutely. there? Absolutely, a little over. Yeah. We don't know what his stores are going to be, but that's going to be a significant uh, change to that roadway. And a lot of people say, will it handle the traffic? I believe it will, because what it's going to do is change the direction of traffic from McKee Avenue in a lot of ways, and hopefully that will alleviate the pressure that the residents feel there. Yeah. Um, I think that was significant, and, I, and I'm always so proud when I sit in the audience to watch how our board members react. I think it was very well vetted. I think the questions they asked, and also it was very little uh, uh, members of the public there who had any negative things to say, other than the fact that they felt let down by the developer of their property, which was Eaglesmere, because they never told them this was coming. Never no advance notice. So, and, and I think that was significant. But I, you know, I have to compliment all the members of the planning board for what they did. Um, also, I see we have people in the audience tonight from Mitzvah. We did have that meeting, and, and I think our dialogue is really ongoing. Um, with that, I'll end my comments and open it up to the public. Why do I know you're going to be first? Come on down, Jim. <laughs> Um, I've been uh, attending these uh, council committee meetings since 2010. And uh, Joan, I'm, I'm going to miss you. Thank you. Of course, I served on uh, Harvey's uh, strategic planning committee. Chairman, and Bruce Dry was the uh, chairman of the fiscal vitality, which I was a part of too. So um, you're going to be missed, Joan. So. Somebody's going to take my place, and you'll feel the same way about her real soon. <laughs> <laughs> Rita would go, uh, do a good job. Thank you. In the meantime, uh, she said she will remain secretary of the HPC. He so said, that would yeah. give her uh, good. <laughs> two, go. two, two duties, you know. That's good news, too. She does a good job with that, too. Yes. Um, okay, is that it, Jim? That's about it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anyone else in the public? How you doing, Council up there? That's one of my favorite. Everybody looks so happy. I guess I'm living in the wrong community. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over. We'll take any time. Yeah. <laughs> Joan, I'll tell you why. All these fellows prior to me took the air out of my balloon. What? Because I had a lot of thoughts that have all been said to you, and you deserve every bit of it. Uh, we've 
known each other for 55 years when I was a little bit younger than Amy and <laughs> came down here and you helped us get started down here. And now we have a, a business over here with over 80 employees and uh, we're very happy with Hamilton Township. And uh, Art, I'm glad to see you up there too. You don't Thank know you. me, but oh, perhaps yeah, one of these days you will. <laughs> uh, the reason I Mayor, came do you want to introduce yourself so everybody knows who you Pardon are? Me? Do you want to introduce yourself for the record? Um, I'm not Donald Trump <laughs> because I wear glasses, but in the meantime, my name is Frank Craig. Craig testing up here. I uh, <clears throat> wanted to come down here tonight, but before I do, I heard you talking about the suicides. In Weymouth Township, in the last six months, we've had four suicides. How many? Four? Four. Four. Yeah. That's right. One of them was our clerk's son. Your fellow at the auto works. Yes. Well, I had the uh, uh, fireplace shanty up here yeah. and uh, another young man that I really didn't know too well. They were all uh, very sad occasions. So I think that uh, I hope that the county here progresses with their plans to continue uh, educating uh, the children in one way or another and explain to them what they can and cannot do. Okay, let's get down to the real reason here. <laughs> the mayors of Alaney County meet the last Friday of every month. And during this meeting, a lot of wonderful ideas are interchanged between the mayors. And we have the people from the county down there. We have the freeholders down there. We have all these folks. <laughs> we don't have Hamilton Township. And you said that before, and you know why I don't attend, don't you? No, I, I don't. I worked that night. Yeah, but you can appoint somebody. You can appoint Rodney. You can put John. You can Amy. You can appoint anybody, but there's so many serious things going on. But I am, I'm abreast of them. Okay. I have a lot of them that communicate with me. You don't, but a lot of them do. Well, I think that's good, Roger. I, I think I, it's I healthy. I don't see that. You know that uh, they're talking about bringing back the... Uh, uh, let me see what it is here. The pilot program. Do you know what the latest on that is? I, I don't mean to put it that way. Pardon. I talked to the assemblyman tonight. Yeah, but and I'm in touch the, with his office program very frequently. On Friday, the Mayor's Association approved a change in that, which will have a significant value on our business here if it goes through. And I just think there was nobody there from Hamilton Township to express their opinion, whether they support it or not. And I think that's important that somebody should have been there. So last Friday of every month, I hope you can find your way to have somebody there. Next meeting is going to be in Pleasantville, uh, right there on the corner. The other thing I wanted to uh, uh, talk about is that you mentioned it early, the central dispatch potential problem, I think, is faded away for the time being. And I said to uh, Mr. Jacobs here, Hamilton Township dodged a bullet. You what? You've Dr. dodged Brewer. a bullet. You had invested a lot of money in your central dispatch. Had it gone to the county, they would have shut you down. And Denny, I, did, Denny did call me and he said, I want you to know, Mayor, I'm not upset. And I said, thank you, I'm not either. Well, a couple months ago, he, he wasn't that kind. It was, a, it was a lone battle that had to be fought over there. Uh, but I'm glad to see they uh, did away with it. That's a wonderful victory for and everybody. Whether he would have shut us down or not remains to be seen. Well, that remains to be seen, Frank. I'm telling you because there's a lot of things that they didn't do right. And I've often said absolutely. to him, you could have handled it a lot different, okay? But, but at the same token, look, we made our point. Uh, we've we've uh, promulgated our message in a positive way. Uh, we've had our newspaper articles. We went on radio stations. We talked about our issues. We sent our resolution of objection to it. So I think we vetted it extremely well, and we're extremely proud. In fact, even at one point, uh, Mayor Tweedle, who probably would have saved somewhere in the neighborhood of $330,000, said he had reservations about approving it, 
because he had longstanding employees that he did not want to lay off. And I think the way that the county went about it could have been done in another way. We probably shouldn't even be talking about it now, but you know what? They could have handled it a lot different. And actually to spend that kind of money in this environment when they've got so many other big issues. You just talked about the pilot. You talked about, they're talking about county, uh, what, uh, assessment now? Assessment, yes. There's a lot of issues that are coming up. That was so. my next thing, but anyway, uh, you're right on it. You're right on, Roger. Uh, I think the death knell was when they had that meeting up here at the uh, Votech, where they were had quite an audience there, and they got into the uh, point of compensation, et cetera, et cetera. And I think from that point, it was all downhill for them. But anyway, we all breathe a sigh of relief with that. But now, as you said, they're now looking at making the county have an assessor where all of them will, uh, they'll take care of all the communities and your local assessors may or may not be retained. Uh, the most I could glean initially is that if you've had a reval within three or four years, you will be forgiven for the first time from the county assessor. It's a bad idea because you know, your assessor knows every building, every house, every dog house, and we need help. And that's why I hope you'll send somebody from Hamilton Township. We do need somebody there to help and speak out for you. Also at the meeting on Friday, I didn't come here to talk about this. I just came to talk about the other thing, that the state of New Jersey has a new coordinator between the county of Atlantic and the state of New Jersey. Uh, he didn't have cards at the time, but I have his name written down. And if you're interested, if you give me a call, I'll tell you what his phone number is and his name, and he lives in South Jersey. He's going to be a new coordinator. So if you have a problem, you can call him, and he'll try and expedite things for you. Is that Ron Fallon? Pardon me? Ron Fallon? I suppose his name. F-I-L-A-N. It might be. Yeah, yeah I have his phone is. numbers. Yeah. Okay. We've already sent stuff to him. But he, he came and introduced himself and things like that. And He's I a good person. He's a great person, yeah. yeah. He seems interested in the job, and we can use all the help at the state that we possibly can use. He's, he's as, uh, as assertive as uh, Mrs. Anderson in some cases. Okay. That's <laughs> all I had to say. I hope you'll, you'll do that. And uh, uh, if you designate a person or, or other than yourself, Roger, if they give me a call, I'll be glad to go with them. Appreciate your comments. Thank Thanks. you. Good to see you, Mayor. Good evening. Hi. Kim Melton, resident of Mays Landon. Just wanted to say congratulations to Ms. Anderson for your retirement, and thank you for your service. You've always uh, such a sweetheart when anybody comes in the township for anything, and you are a plethora of information. So you will be missed. Thank you. Also, I want to thank the mayor and Mr. Schenkner and the administrator for coming to NISPA and meeting with us, going over some things. Um, I appreciate you coming out and um, doing what you said you were going to do. Um, I just want to say that I want to keep the communication open. Nothing was really resolved yet, but we do have communication going on. and. Um, I do want to get something to the administrator as far as some kind of plan or something that we can do. And so as long as we can keep communications open, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Well, that's it. And, you know, after I left the other day, uh, we had talked about it, Mike, Art, and myself, and Ingrid, too, about the, the little building on the corner, which we thought was owned by the school. It's not owned by them. Atlantic, is it Atlantic Resource? Damn. Are they still in existence? I think they are in Atlantic, at, uh, they were in Atlantic City, but I think they're at the ACCC now. Are they there? Because uh, I said to Michael, one of the things I would like to see happen is sprucing up that property. Yeah. I mean, the playground is in disrepair. Abandoned. There's broken windows there. The building looks in shambles from the outside. And if they're not going to do anything with it, then obviously maybe we can put some pressure on them. Yeah. Because it's a shame that that building is vacant there. They used to have what, like a preschool in there? Yeah, it's a preschool. That's where the, the preschool. The county had it for years, and they just closed about four years ago, maybe four or five. Was years it four ago. or five? 
you know, uh, and, and obviously after your meeting, we, we had talked the next day, Michael and I and, and Art and Ingrid, and, uh, uh, and I told Dwight too, Dwight, uh, we'll get you, I talked to John about getting you to speak to the Merchants Association. Absolutely. Okay, you said you wanted to, and he's going to arrange that. Uh, did, did our friend from across the street, he didn't? I'll get on the phone with him in the morning, okay? Because <laughs> follow through is very important. Uh, and, and I think, uh, I will say this in public, uh, uh, your building looks great inside. Uh, all the efforts that were put in there and the volunteer labor that went to keep that place up, it's significant. Um, we also talked to the president of the Merchants Association. I did, I saw him the other night and uh, I'd asked them to consider having an event up there, uh, which I think obviously uh, we talked about is bringing more and more uh, um, Notoriety, people yeah. into the neighborhood who can understand that that's part of the neighborhood too, okay? So, uh, and, and I heard you, I heard you. <laughs> uh, your point was well taken at the last meeting. Uh, so, but thank you, Kim. We'll keep the lines open. Thank you. And Kim, let me let me tell you that I was very much looking forward to attending that meeting. Also, uh, and no one informed me about it. No one from Mitzvah. No one from uh, from the township. Now, maybe your assumption was that somebody would tell me about it, but they didn't, and and I missed it. And I, I hope you know that I do support the I efforts to get that that going. Absolutely. Well, I Thank think you. we all do. Um, it's just we can't. Well, it would be nice to. I didn't know about it either, but I mean, there's no more than two right, of us right, can go sir. anyway. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Oh, that's, come on up. Ethel Wade um, from MISPA. Uh, first, I just want to um, congratulate Mr. Uh, Mrs. Anderson for her retirement. Known her for many, many, many years, and um, from the other side of the desk, my first as, a, as an adult seeing her is when she explained to me that I was late paying my taxes and I owed 25 cents. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you were in the old building and you came up to help to explain when they were trying to explain oh, to me, oh. but you came to explain and I had to pay the 25 cents. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> she doesn't let you get away with anything, I swear. But she just helped explain. See, Bob. No, she don't pick on everybody, okay. <laughs> um, I, I, had, uh, I missed the last meeting, and I, I just wanted to uh, be here um, this evening to kind of confirm and reaffirm some of the things that was talked about last meeting. Um, is that uh, one of the main things about Miss Finland Human Services is that MISPA Inland Human Services was that a service and continues to be a service. But one of the key things that we did in the area, we provided jobs. Um, and that's always a necessity in help growing a community. Because the, uh, if you have people with jobs, they can pay their bills. Um, but um, I am hoping that we would continue a very clear dialogue of our purpose and unfortunately uh, I was there for over 24 years um, and um, the uh, resources of, um, of grants they dried up um, and things had to change um, also just wanted to say and I know Reverend Rozier is coming up to speak also that it came around a time when the township was going through some changes in cutting budgets and that's how we inherited somewhat of the building it kind of came that way to us but um, I'm there I'm back there now um, to work volunteering time um, like many of, of others that are sitting here um, again giving back in the community because it's much much needed so I'm hoping that we would continue we'll have some clear-cut plans um, where we're going in three months, six months, and a year so that we can really um, come up with something that's concrete and we can move forward. Because it's something that also I, I don't want it to be misnomer that it was the community center was just for Miss, but it was not. It was for Atlantic County residents. Mm. Uh, we helped a lot of people from the apartments and a lot of the apartments apartment complexes we help people with rent 
mortgage, we help families with food um, from, from all over the county. So I just don't want it to be known that it was just helping people just in MISPA. So we're looking forward to a, a sound relationship that we could, that it could be beneficial mainly for the residents of Hamilton Township that we will be able to do so all over again. Um, and I'm going to say in advance, I'm going to thank you for your help because I'm believing you're going to be able to help. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. We'll try. <clears throat> I'm hey Reverend Claude Rozier. I'm the pastor of the St. John Church in Mispa for the past 15 years. I've known, uh, well, I met Joan about 12 years ago, a couple years after I came here, and back and forth we talked a few times in the office. So I just want to say congratulations on your retirement. That's first. Secondly, learn to enjoy your retirement. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody make you go back to work. Don't do no work. Just sit home and then travel. <laughs> Take it from a person who did it. <laughs> Secondly, I want to um, recommend to the township committee if they could make a official recognition to William Burt, who passed a few weeks ago. Mm. He was a volunteer fireman for MISPA for 40 years. He was also a police constable in MISPA for many years. And we'd like to have the township recognize his service in that he served in that township for so, so many yeah. years. James and just he did it. things that, uh, in serving the community, before there was a competent police force who was there to you know, um, serve the community. Secondly, I want to correct something. I believe it was said that the, uh, myself and Reverend Wade uh, requested Mr. Inland Building from the township, that is not so. The truth is that the former mayor of this township came to me, and I believe there's some here who was there at the meeting and asked us if we would be interested in having the building. And we agreed and took quite a while, but we finally agreed that we would take possession of the building for the sum of $2. We never once came to tell you about ass, no two dollars. One dollar for the building, one dollar for the vehicles. We paid two dollars. Okay, so I just want that clarified. I know it's in the records, because I believe it was in 2008 uh, when they came. So I know it's in the township minutes. So I just want that clarified. All right? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Anyone else? Thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Mrs. Anderson was the person that tried to help us name whatever our restaurant was. And Uncle Dewey's in Miss, but we didn't know what to call it because it was the first outdoor place. But congratulations. She helped me with the engineers. And I went through a lot, but thanks to her, we got through it. And I oh. thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Also, I would like to say we have been sort of an asset to the town because the kids from the Miss Inland Human Services, we know that six children graduated from college that worked for Uncle Dewey. So we've supported each other through the whole time, and I'm very proud of that. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Are you still the only outdoor uh, restaurant in the uh, township? Does anybody know? I don't think so. It looked like everybody tried. I should have patented it. <laughs> oh. Anyone else in the public? Bruce? <clears throat> I'd just like to add my congratulations and appreciation to uh, Mrs. Anderson. Uh, I can remember um, when I had the privilege of s serving on township committee, we 
um, presented her 25 year uh, uh, plaque at that time, and that was, I guess, 21 years ago, and I thought that was pretty amazing of, of 25 years, so uh, congratulations. And, uh, um, and I was just thinking, one of the, uh, over the 46 years, there's only been one constant on our township committee, and it's been Mrs. Anderson. Yep. Um, I, I don't know, do you know uh, by any chance how many township committee persons have uh, served on the committee since you started? How many? What was Any it? different? Uh, oh. Not to put you on the spot, but I can imagine it's a lot. And uh, I think each and every one, uh, whether it's a Democrat or Republican, uh, Mrs. Anderson uh, treated everybody equally, mm -hmm. uh, helped everybody uh, no matter what, and uh, had the township in heart. So thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Bruce. Anyone else in the public? Come on, Jen. Carol. But only, only if Paul hands you the microphone so that we hear you on the record. <coughs> He's coming. He's doing his due diligence. Well, now she's there. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is mainly uh, for our friends and neighbors here from MISBA. Although they are right down the street, it seems that you're kind of in California half the time. And I will have to introduce myself. My name is Carol Pickett Young, and I am the chairperson of the Township of Hamilton Senior Citizen Advisory Committee. We have only been in existence since last September. And one of our goals is to have an outreach program which extends to MISPA and beyond, which uh, I would hope would involve some of you folks. Although we are basically involved with senior citizens, we would like to get to the churches, to any uh, organizations that you have that would involve uh, senior citizens and be able to have programs with you, offer you any type of assistance that we can with anything new in services as far as medical and home care and things like that. So before you leave, I would like to give uh, pastor or someone else my card so that you can contact with me and it just so happens that we have a meeting this Thursday in City Hall at 630 in the um, meeting room one which is down the hall and around but it is an open meeting and we would be very happy to have you we have one particular member of the committee who is very concerned about what happens to the people in the western part of the county so she will be very happy to see some people there from MISBA, and so would we. Thank you. Uh, the other thing, uh, Mayor, was that uh, the, the one thing that the Senior Citizen Committee was trying to achieve was an outreach program with our, our neighbors. But we also had wanted to start an intergenerational program. We do have some people from the library that are going to help us with that, and they're basically going to do it with the kids across the street that are involved in the library. Mm -hmm. But we also, now that we have this program at the high school, um, all of our members have been in some type of occupation where they would have been in contact with the public. And I think it would be, unfortunately, the young lady left who was in charge of it, but I will definitely contact her and see if there is anything yeah, that we can yeah. do. Yeah, I can get you her, her info, okay. Carol. And the other thing I told Diane prior to the meeting, <coughs> Mitchell Carter, the young man who's been in here, um, he is, I think, I forget if he said he was the president of the Honor Society at Ocrest as well, but he was looking for community service opportunities. And I said, I wanted to get him partnered up with, with the Senior Advisory Committee because I think there's so many things that students could do in partnership with you all in terms of, number one, helping get the message out to um, seniors' family members, um, but number two, planning events um, where you know students and the seniors can interact, whether it's, you know, we used to have um, Sunday Sundays where we would have, you know, ice cream with the seniors mm -hmm. um, on Sundays. Uh, there used to be, you know, the, the senior harvest ball where it was, you know, events for seniors to get dressed up and the students would come and be their dates. And um, it, it, they were just great events. And, uh, and, and, and I, I mentioned to Mitchell that I thought your organization would benefit greatly from partnering up with students um, 
another thing that came to mind was trying to put something together, um, the, the shovels for seniors, because we've talked about a lot when snow comes that seniors are always looking for somebody to come shovel. And maybe, um, you know, hopefully not even at a cost, maybe if some kids are looking for service hours and could come out and shovel when snow comes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the coordination of all of that. Yeah. So um, I will get you Mitchell's information, and I told Mitchell I would get him your information. Okay. So I will be sure to do that. If I could, I'd certainly like to thank you for those comments and that offer because that is completely within the spirit of the uh, Senior Advisory Committee, the kind of spirit that we wanted to see happen when, when we initiated this. Uh, and also, you mentioned that the, uh, the students can help the seniors, but the seniors can also help the students. Uh -huh. And one of the things that the Minsma Center had when, uh, when it's heyday was it had seniors helping with reading with the, with the kids. And mm -hmm. the people that did it enjoyed it, and it had a very positive impact. So yeah, there's a lot to be done both ways, and thank you for reaching out like that. Absolutely. Thanks, Carol. Thank Anyone you. else in the public? Robert? Who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Committee. Robert Smith, Mays Landing. I'm not used to being on this side of the microphone, but after working with Mrs. Anderson for 16 years, I thought I would be remiss in not attending her last meeting and thanking her for all the wisdom and the guidance that she provided me during my time here at Hamilton Township. Uh, I think she may be a little young for retirement, but I do wish her the best <laughs> in her retirement. <laughs> Thank oh, you. that's very Thanks. sweet, Thank Bob. you very much. That's Thank great. You. Thank, Thank you, Bob. You. Well, we should have some cake here. <laughs> that's next week. Come in later in the week. Yeah. Anyone else in the public? Move to close public portion. Second. second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, You're going to read your last uh, executive session resolution there, ma'am? Oh, yeah. Be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Hamilton that this meeting adjourn to an executive session to discuss matters of litigation which are exempt from public discussion under the open public meetings law, the litigation being Timber Glen litigation and Tavistock litigation be it further resolved that the township committee will reconvene in public session to announce any uh, results of the executive session that may have occurred make a motion so second. second all in favor aye. Aye. aye motion carries okay okay and i will speak into the microphone thank you sir <laughs> because i have been directed by the finest person to do so <laughs> And you'll have a recording of this, too. It's like, watch the tram car, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the time is quarter of nine. Uh, the Township Committee went into executive session and addressed only the two subject matters that were announced. That is the Timbergen litigation and the probability of bringing litigation in Tavistock. Uh, the minutes of those meetings will be made available to the public at which time the confidential nature of the matter is no longer confidential. Uh, I, I can report that there will be no vote this evening with respect to the Timber Glen issue um, and that I have been directed to provide additional information and I will. And I'll get back to you at a future meeting with respect to that. Um, with respect to Tavistock, I would uh, ask the Township Committee to consider making a motion consistent with the discussions that were had in the executive session. I'll make I'll a move. motion on uh, the Tavistock uh, litigation. Um, the motion is to authorize our solicitor to file a lawsuit against the two bonding companies in the Tavistock matter. Second. A motion is second. Any Roll call. Huh? Any questions or comments? Mrs. Anderson. The final vote. Final vote. Okay. Ms. Gatto? Yes. Mr. Gushard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Mayor Silver? Yes. All yes and carry. Make a motion to adjourn Second. the final meeting of Joan A. Anderson. <laughs> it's I. Uh, Joan I. Anderson, sorry. Of Anderson Way? Of Anderson oh, Way. <laughs> that was something else. I, I, 
that was a real shocker. I was, <laughs> I was trying to prepare myself in my mind for anything. <laughs> that was oh, that was. We're putting a toll roll up there as soon as it's in your name. I'm going to charge him to go on the dirt road. <laughs> then I'll you have, 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 have a motion. I have a motion. We have a motion. We have second. a second. Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Farewell, Mrs. Anderson. Yes. yes. God bless. Okay.